At any given moment in our lives, we can experience a major turn of events. I mean, it goes without saying what we've been experiencing around the world is a major turn of events. But let's get more personal. The reality is that we can experience a major turn of events in our own lives at any moment, whether it be uh, the sickness of a loved one that comes by surprise, the death of a loved one, or loss of a job, all kinds of possible major turn of events in our lives that can change the trajectory of our future for a long time. Good Friday. Good Friday in history is one of those major turning points in history that will change our life forever, depending on what we choose to do with that event in history. In fact, with who was in the center of that event in history, and that is Jesus Christ. You see, for Jesus, just a few days before his crucifixion, everybody was praising him, except for, of course, the religious leaders. Even his disciples were saying, we'll go all the way to death with you. If anybody will choose to put you to death, I'm going with you. Because he actually proclaimed to his disciples and to many others, people will put me to death. But he said, three days later, I'll rise from the dead. And a turning point happened on Friday morning. These people who were praising him and these disciples of him said, I'm going to go all the way to death with you. When he actually was arrested, where were his disciples? Where was the crowd? In fact, we read in every one of the Gospels and in Mark chapter 15 <clears throat> that he was brought before Pilate. Pilate, who was a governor, uh, had the power and authority given by God, Jesus says, lets him know that for certain, given by God to be able to release him. But Jesus did not defend himself. In fact, Jesus said, I could call down angels to rescue me if I wanted to, but he didn't. Look at what happened. It was a custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. And the crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. So he asked the crowd, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews, Jesus Christ? Knowing it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate released, release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. And they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. I'm not going to go into the gruesome details of what flogging is all about, or even crucifixion. You can look it up for yourself. But why? Why? Would Jesus allow this major turning point in his life to actually happen? <clears throat> when he had the power and authority, he was the son of God to say, enough with this. And it doesn't go all the way to the cross. Why? Why? Romans 3 gives us the answer. Romans 3 lets us know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Fall short, that idea of, you know, you're going, you have a meeting to go to, but you're always late. Or you have a bus to catch and you're late and you miss the bus. We all have missed the bus, so to speak. <clears throat> We've missed the opportunity because of our sins to be with God in heaven forever. For you see, in the beginning of time, God created the world and he said, it is good, it is good. He, he walked on earth with Adam and Eve. In essence, his kingdom was on earth and he gave Adam and Eve a few commands. It was pretty simple. 
But that enemy you said, ah, hmm, I think I'll go at it my way. Because maybe I know what's best for me and not God, even though he created me. <laughs> and everyone since that day, every one of us, at one point or another, have chosen to go our own way, have sinned since the beginning, and we fall short of heaven. And you know what, folks? There's nothing we can do to earn our way back to heaven because what it would take, in essence, is for us to be able to, for some reason, some way, erase all of our past sins so that we can be made pure and holy and perfect again. That's not possible. For you see, imperfection, unholiness, can never be in the place where holiness and perfection resides. That's where God is, heaven. So we're doomed. We're doomed to always fall short of the glory of God. We live, therefore, a hopeless life with no meaning, with, with death at the end and ultimately hell, which is where we deserve to go, a place totally separated from God, a place of utter darkness and pain and suffering. We deserve to go there. But, but, why did Jesus allow this turning point to happen for people to yell, crucify, crucify him, and him to go all the way to the cross? Why did he allow that to happen? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Oh, folks, you see, the price we should have paid, the right judgment we should have received for our sins against God and against humanity, we should have received it. Instead of us receiving it, Jesus took it upon himself. Now, if he was just a man, hmm, okay, not much that a man can do to save us, but he was never just a man. He was both God and man. That's why he is the only one that can stand in the gap between us, humanity, and God. So I encourage you this day to choose to believe in what Jesus did for us. To choose to believe that Jesus didn't just die on Good Friday, but in a couple of days we're going to celebrate his resurrection. So the proof of the fact that he rose from the dead gives us the confidence that we too who believe in him, when we die, will rise from the dead as well. Why? Because the Bible says when he took our place on the cross and we choose to believe in what he did for us and who he is, we'll also receive forgiveness of our sins. That means we'll be declared not guilty anymore. And Christ's righteousness, Christ's holiness will be upon us. It will cover us. So that now we can cross the bridge from death to life, from darkness to light, from life without God to life with God now and for eternity. Folks, this is why it's called Good Friday. And I encourage you today, let it be the turning point of your life that you choose to say yes to Jesus and receive from him forgiveness of sins that we don't have to be bearing the burden of guilt anymore but instead can live a life of peace and of joy knowing that we are right with God that if anything ever happened to us where ultimately death happens to us it's just <laughs> it's just a pathway an open door to life eternal with God this is a gift that Jesus gives us on Good Friday for you for your family, for your friends. Choose to believe today and receive his love and forgiveness. If you have any questions, by all means, private message me or email me at nccKitchener at gmail.com. NCC, because I'm Steve Bach, the pastor of Northside Community Church in Kitchener. And you can email me at nccKitchener at gmail.com. And I'll help answer your questions and guide you in this new turning point in your life. God bless. Have a great Easter weekend and join us Easter Sunday for a service we're going to have on Zoom. If you go to our website, northsidecommunitychurch.ca, you can click on join online and we'll give you a link right away, email you a link to join us online this Sunday. Bye-bye for now.